Daniel and Linda Farnworth. The name of our farm is Hillside Pastures. It's located just south of Spring Green. It's land that was converted from corn and beans to perennial pastures in 2011. So we're producing uh, purebred registered Red Devon cattle. We sell mostly bulls and, and heifers, bred cows and so forth, to other farmers that are starting into grass finishing operations. Yeah, and people often ask, how do you get the pasture paddock to paddock? Um, how do you get them through there? So all you have to do is head that way and they all, ears are up and they're all watching. They're standing there by the time you open the gate. They know exactly what's going on. So it's, it's an 80 acre farm plus 20 acres of leased land. This area here, you'll see that we've cleared a lot of this. This is kind of a savanna like in that. We'll show you kind of how we got this broken down into paddocks to control where they graze at what time and for how long and how much forage they leave on the ground when they uh, get out of that paddock. The concept is to keep the ground at all times covered with a deep soil with a deep root structure so that when it rains it's got the capacity to absorb a lot of water before it runs into the creek. And this is Lowry Creek. Right through here is a tributary that joins Lowry Creek right at the pond at Taliesin. Mm -hmm. And from there it goes into the Wisconsin River. The Wisconsin uh, joins the Mississippi, which of course uh, gets to the Gulf. The, the, the broader watershed is very expansive, and that's been one of the things that has been supported by the Michael Fields Institute. Um, Early on, one of the first things Margaret did was put us in touch with the fishermen in the Gulf. There's a dead zone there that's very expensive. And the effort is to start here. A group of people um, has been working with uh, the Department of Natural Resources. Once a month, on the second Tuesday of every month, uh, there are probably five different groups that measure the quality of the water in different locations along Lowry Creek. And it's been extremely edifying uh, to learn about the importance of uh, dissolved oxygen, for example, uh, and clarity of the water, how muddy is it, how clear is it, how much it changes after a rain, how different it is from the upper reaches of the water shed, and how different it might be down at the bottom where it's, it's the waters have flown all the way through the watershed and now they're going, to, they're almost to the Wisconsin River. Well, it's our legacy, you know, it's what the, the next generation and the next and the next and the next will inherit. And I think we've, we've proven ourselves uh, an irresponsible culture for the most part. So what we're trying to